Hi, if you're using a third party payroll provider or separate software for managing your payroll rather than QuickBooks, then I'm going to show you how you can import that payroll into your QuickBooks company file, and that's QuickBooks desktop or even QuickBooks online. So you'll need to transfer your payroll data to QuickBooks periodically to reflect the accurate payroll expenses and liabilities um, that you're incurring and remitting to tax agencies, health insurance or pension providers and so on. So some third party payroll providers do provide some integration um, or that direct integration to QuickBooks, but others do not. So they expect you to rekey the payroll data into your QuickBooks company file, or they can produce a sample file, whether that's in a payroll report in either a Excel format or in a IIF format. So here's an example of what type of information will be on that particular report. So it's going to be normally in the format of a journal and it will post to the various general ledger accounts, either debits and credits, to reflect the natural movements in the balances of those accounts in QuickBooks. Now this example is a relatively straightforward example. It's fairly small, but if you're using a lot of different wage types or overtime rates or even um, payroll taxes, deductions, entitlements and pension payments, etc., then the payment file can get very long very quickly. And add to that the ability to track, say, by department, and you'll see that payroll report um, lengthen out to many hundreds of lines. And I've seen many examples of that. Now, if you're having to rekey that into QuickBooks every pay period, that's going to create a lot of manual, extra manual data entry that you don't really need. So you could import the IIF file into QuickBooks and create a journal, but that's only restricted to, say, QuickBooks desktop. And if the IIF file has any particular problems with it, then you're going to have to work those out and edit the IIF file. So what I'm going to show you is how you can use a product called Z-Axis is to get that journal entry data into QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online, which can save you many hours and reduce costly mistakes. It also gives you the flexibility to change either any of the data or manipulate it as it goes through. So there's a couple of things that you really need to consider before you start. The first is making sure that your general ledger names in the payroll report match the general ledger names in QuickBooks. So for example, here you can see this particular name doesn't necessarily match the one that we have in QuickBooks. Now, Axis has a solution to help you manage those mismatches. You could um, set up a search and replace function, which effectively translate one general ledger name into another. And there's a demonstration of how to do that in this link above now. Or you may also be wanting to say, um, track your payroll um, report or your payroll expenses and liabilities by department or class. And so having the ability to match the departments with the department list or class name list or categorization in QuickBooks is also uh, really important before you start off importing that data into your QuickBooks company file. So let's actually show you an example of how to do this import um, on the desktop. So to start off, I've downloaded a, um, a journal file from uh, my payroll provider. And in this case, it's a journal file that's in an IIF file format. So if I open that, I'll show you roughly what's contained within that. Now, if I was using QuickBooks desktop, then I could import that directly into my QuickBooks company file. But I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna import this IIF file for the payroll journal into QuickBooks Online. So that's what the IF file looks like. So it's a pretty difficult format to follow. Now, so I've opened Z Axis and I'm going to connect to my QuickBooks Online company file. So once we've connected, you'll see down here the name of the company file that we're connected to. And we're going to select the Import tab. And we're going to browse to that journal file that we're going to upload. 
Access will open that file and will display in this table here the contents of, of that journal. Next, we're going to add a new mapping. And we're going to select the option to create a new map for a journal. And we're going to go through the process of mapping the columns in the import file, the IIF file, to the corresponding fields in QuickBooks. So here, document number, we're going to do transaction date, and do the line description. Um, the account is going to go against this one, a debit amount and a credit. And we're going to put in the um, line class because we're going to use the categorization here so that we can make sure that we get this in the right way. So once we've completed all the fields that we know we're going to map, um, we'll give the mapping a name and save. Now I know there's one extra thing which I wanted to show you, which was what we're going to do about some of these expense accounts. Because there's a mismatch between what we have in QuickBooks and what we have in our online files. So, so we've done some mismatch between the name of the file in the import screen here. We've got um, one for liabilities, employee and Medicare. Um, actually in QuickBooks, this is under the other current liabilities account. So what we need to do is we're going to do what we call a search and replace. So we're going to put in, so in Axis, we're going to edit the map. We're going to go into the line account. We're going to add a function and we'll call it um, lookup. So when, whenever we see a liabilities in the import file, we're going to translate that into other current liabilities because they're called different things between the two different applications. So we'll click, we'll save that. And then we'll go back and we'll save that map. So once we click save, now you'll notice that those two general ledger accounts have been replaced with the correct value. So those functions will search and replace can be saved. So the next time you apply the mapping, the translation will occur. So that's just one great way of um, translating GL account names that are different or have a mismatch. You can do that with any other field as well. So we could do that with line class as well. So once we're ready, now there's one bit other bit of information we're going to need. We're going to need a document number. So I'm going to put this in as we what we call a constant. So that will make sure that all those rows are grouped together on the same journal. And I'll select the option for auto numbering. So when it comes to importing that journal, use the next sequential number in QuickBooks. And when we're ready, we're going to click import. And once it's imported, you'll get a status uh, showing in this diagram this box here. And if we click on view, it will open up the journal that we've just imported. So there is the payroll journal for ADP that we've just imported. So that's very simply how you can use access to import payroll data from a outsourced payroll system or a, another software application doing your payroll into your QuickBooks desktop or QuickBooks online company file.